I guess I'll go in no particular order. This is my gen set and part of the dust blowing system for my wide belt sanders. Uh, the reason I went with this gen set was that there's no three phase power here. Actually at my old farm we did have it through the farm but the local power company wanted a basic $10,000 just to string the wires from the pole to my barn. I know that's different companies have different policies from what I've heard, but I found it to be untenable and have chosen to pick up one of these extra large, this is a 150,000 kilowatt um, machine that depending on your voltage, how many amps you can produce, but it's wired for four 40 volts and seems to have about 150 amps at that. And believe it or not, some of my machines come close to requiring that. Uh, my calculations are the diesel fuel to run this is about $15 an hour. The power company, depending on your kilowatt price, is somewhere between 20 to $25 an hour to run the same machine. So you do have to keep in consideration wear and tear maintenance and replacement of this machine but for an hour to hour basis it's not as expensive as you might think though it's still plenty expensive um, here's the lumber yard for what it's worth um, all stages of being cut stacked and stickered we try to be very careful about keeping things level we have a palletized system of both lids and you can see here's the stickers we move around in these and we have varying types of stickers and sizes uh, all the way from airflow stickers which we can kind of see in this arrangement here I have these homemade ones on top which are simply run through a power feeder on a dado type bit and then we have these uh, twisty airflow commercially made ones that I've purchased from a local large kiln operation that uh, uses eight footers and when they break them they sell them to us little guys but they're still near a buck a piece so you need thousands and thousands of these things um, uh, these setups are temporary here we just stickered these this material gets moved uh, into this area which is on rock and gravel um, a firm flat base with good protection from rain and weather is critical uh, we make these bunks up into like thicknesses and we put a date on them you can see that on some of these to go into the kiln once it has air dried a certain amount I strongly recommend that um, I've built and used a number of different kilns solar kilns homemade dehumidification kilns, a Nile kiln, and uh, currently I'm utilizing a friend because I don't have time to keep track of these things, but um, I'm only one guy and I'm doing four people's jobs, but anyways you can see some of our cut material and here's our log piles and you do need space uh, a lot more space than you think you need wide open space to be able to sort and store and stack these things um, as we come over here we come to a machine that <clears throat> is very critical this is partly why uh, I bought a sawmill for sixteen thousand dollars instead of sixty thousand dollars is because log handling is maybe just as important a component <clears throat> and if you hunt for these things, these things are to be found. And I've had this is my third iteration of this. Here's slab wood going to be turned into firewood and reject logs. <clears throat> this is a L8000 uh, with a it's not a Prentice load, or maybe it's a Barco. <clears throat> um, and that dump trailer this is a telescoping boom this thing was a mess when I got it 
uh, still not quite 100%, but uh, we had to build this carrier on the back to accept the grapple. This was a Frankenstein thing put together by uh, a tree service before they went out of business. And the dump trailer makes handy to carry more logs in this operation here. So um, over here we have the main facility, um, a heavy duty, I would recommend a one ton diesel, four by four, capable of hauling lumber and logs in quantity. Um, it pays to be as efficient as you can. I was able to pick this truck up fairly inexpensively and it is worked out that I can keep the trailer hooked to it. Here we have some slabs back from my kiln buddy. Um, and we do a lot of transporting of material here, there, and everywhere. So uh, I am going to convert this to a flatbed gooseneck setup to get uh, a bigger trailer. But we need to make some money to do that, and we want to make sure that we don't go into too much debt and keep our cash flow good. But uh, let's take a look at some of the processing equipment. We do have a Lucas 1030 slabbing, and I bought the conventional head with the slabbing attachment because that gave us the planer head. And the planer head is critical in flattening large slabs. Uh, they're popular right now, it won't be forever, but um, we'll do some videos on this machine. Right now it's set up with the planer head. The wind has kind of blown our covers around. But with this blade, I'm not sure if you can see it there, on the machine, and I've modified this machine as well. This machine runs slower than all the other Lucas mills, so uh, when I convert it over to the slabbing attachment, I actually change the pulley ratio on the gearbox and get a much better feed system. I have a system that we will look at someday with a winch that power feeds this and makes slabbing a lot easier. I have been thinking of going away from the slabbing giant slabs as they may sell, but not as much as the medium to smalls. So I'm going to turn the lights on here and we can see some of the operations in here. This was a horse riding arena. Well, my lights aren't coming on. So one of the helpers must have uh, turned it off a different way. Um, the small mobile forklift is quite useful in here. Everybody wants to know why I have so many forklifts. This is the dry storage lumber area where when material comes back from the kiln, we bring it in here. Sorry about the darkness. There we go. And I got that to turn on. And um, so keeping things dry and um, in good shape is critical. Don't want any re-wetting. So these smaller live edge pieces and here's the airflow stickers that have come out of the material just as it came back from the kiln. Those are critical for not having sticker stain in your sapwood and in maples and other light woods. This is another critical key machine that people are overlooking. This is a Moffett. Uh, it mounts on the back of semi trucks, but has a bunch of useful qualities. They're plentiful now that a lot of companies are using them. They have 
selectable two-wheel or all-wheel drive. They have really good profile being wide. This lift goes back into the machine. So the machine only weighs 4,500 pounds, yet it's capable of picking up 5,000 pounds, which makes the machine movable with smaller equipment. It's very strong and able to move those big logs. And it is quite wide and necessitates the use of these smaller propane forklifts inside. We do have a dirt floor here, and so we use these pneumatic tired guys that scoot around in here much easier. Um, we still have the conventional Kubota diesel tractor here, which has been our mainstay. I've been through a few of these. Had a Yanmar, which was a good beginner. This is the largest, most powerful compact one I could find. Um, this picks up 90% of what I need, and as a basic machine, this would be the go-to machine. Can't stand skid steers and getting beat up in them and not being able to move down the road and in and out of the woods if we're there. Um, so here's our new mainstay. This is a Semco 6000. I think they call it a 43-inch wide planer sander. This is what is a power hog. We've got a 50-horse planer motor followed by a 30-horse wide belt sander. The requirements for this air compressor, along with all the blowers, gets us up over 100 amps just to run this machine. It has conveyor motors and lift motors and you name it. So we have a system here where we can remove a good quantity of material and have uh, material coming out after being sanded. Um, comes out on these conveyor tables and the forklift moves it around. Um, Sorry about the washout. We've got more dried lumber storage. These are our wide slider doors uh, for moving in long material. Here's junk alley where we keep tools and saws. And then over here we have our 37 inch dual head time saver wide belt sander. This is also a power hog, though not quite as big. I think this first motor is a 40 horse and the second motor is a 30 horse. And um, these machines can be had at auction relatively inexpensively. You don't know what you're getting, uh, so you're taking a risk. But this company also, like Woodmiser, is a company that stocks parts and it's fairly good at helping people with their older machines. Um, so, uh, this is kind of the heart of our operation. We still rely on companies. I think that is a woodpecker pounding on the metal building. I'm not sure why, but uh, I think I'll switch back to the tripod and give my last thoughts.